Good morning, everyone. Uh, I am Joy Gold, um, consultant to Dexter Yamada and QID. My name is Russell Ruderman. By way of introduction, I'm also a state senator from Pune and Kau, and also the owner of Island Naturals Markets. I'm testifying as an individual, and most relevantly, perhaps, as the owner of Island Naturals Market today, rather than as a sender. We continue to oppose Bill 13 Draft 2 because this is a ban on PS foam containers and tied to the assumption that compostable food containers can be diverted to the county's compost facility by July 1st, 2018, a questionable implementation date. Five years ago as a senator, we were considering such a bill at the state, which I'm embarrassed that we haven't passed it, but we heard the same distributor come before us that you've heard from, from the representative. And I asked them directly, are you making any plans for a transition to non-styrofoam products? This was five years ago. They said no. They're still not making any plans for a transition. Mandating the use of compostable products will economically impact particularly East Hawaii food operators and Hawaii County programs. We did eliminate styrofoam products for the most part over 18 years ago. And just as with the plastic bag ban, I've been watching with humor as people tell, tell us you can't do it because we already did it and it's very popular, it's very successful, has had no negative economic impact on us at all. And we do refute the claims of harm to people as well as to marine animals. All the plastic bag ban arguments, all of them, are analogous to the current situation. None of them held water, none of them were true, and we, we, we have uh, tens of millions fewer plastic bags on our island as a result of the bold action of this county council. Without a composting facility, it will go to the landfill where it will not be degraded. All food service wear will not degrade in landfills because of the lack of air and water. As a business person, I can't think of anything more important than to observe trends there is certainly a worldwide trend away from styrofoam. If this distributor is choosing not to pay attention to that trend, uh, that's an opportunity that they're choosing to ignore at their own peril. It's not for the world to go backwards to accommodate someone who's refusing to move forwards. You have greater obligations than to that distributor. There's no differentiation between polystyrene foam used for coolers, ice chests, and packaging versus food-grade polystyrene for food service containers in regards to ocean debris. Local marine scientists at the Maui Council admit that more research is needed to ascertain how much of marine debris is actually from PS foam food containers. Polystyrene is a uniquely poisonous and persistent product. It's not your average plastic. It can't be recycled. And the idea that it burns in, in, in some power plant is to ignore the extremely toxic byproducts of burning uh, polystyrene or any kind of plastic. It is ironic that the proposed ban exempts coolers, ice chests, and packing material when these products are most likely found in the coastal areas. I encourage you folks to focus on food service and people say, well, you can still buy a styrofoam cooler or we'll still get styrofoam packing peanuts. Well, those are things we can't as easily as ad address. And by addressing the food service aspect, we will be addressing 99% of the styrofoam that gets consumed on our island. I think it's worth addressing 99%, even if we can't be perfect. Rather than impose bans that will raise the cost to business as well as residents, stronger litter management and consequences for failing to dispose such trash must be the focus of the council and the community. The cost differential between, I brought a few show and tell items here, not all of them, but um, the cost differential between these and their styrofoam equivalent is between zero and maybe 10 cents. On average, I've looked up about 10 of them, between maybe four and 11 cents cost differential. So much has been said about uh, the cost differential, but careful study is encouraged because it may have impact. The KYD price list shows that it can be as much as $40 a case for regular pulp and $45 a case for the higher-end uh, pulp product. I don't understand how someone can tell us that the price of a plate lunch is going to go up 50 cents when the only cost increase was 5 or 10 cents. How does that happen? It's completely absurd. So when someone tells you the price of your lunch will be unaffordable, you know they're, they're speaking nonsense. It'll go up a nickel or maybe a dime 
if the business chooses to pass 100% of that increased cost on. Most will not do so. The PS Foam food server products are estimated at less than 1% of Hawaii County's landfill. A much broader discussion about landfill diversion is needed since once banned, compostable and alternative products will increase in the landfill. Bioenergy Hawaii must be involved in this broader discussions because it is part of the solution for landfill diversion and includes the use of PS foam food service containers as valued feedstock. We have never had to raise our price based on the cost of these containers. We have nothing but positive feedback. The idea that they're not healthful or not food, food quality is, is just nonsense. You know, I, I, I was shocked to hear that. So we've been with outsider foam products. The only exception that we have is the little trays that have been discussed that you put fish, cheese, meat on. There's not a suitable, reliable non-styrofoam uh, alternative for that. Packaging of raw meat, fish, and eggs shall be exempt until such time that compostable alternatives are developed and are available. This exemption acknowledges that there are no current compostable alternatives available. I don't think there's anybody in this island that has as much experience with styrofoam alternatives than I, as I do. And it's direct first-person experience. I sought them out. I bought them. I paid for them. I served them to the customers. I've thrown them away for 18 years now. I think I understand a little bit more about it than some of the misinformation that's been presented to you. Likewise, there are no comparable alternatives to PS Foam food service containers that can compete on safety, functionality, and affordability. Yet the bill persists to ban it and create a mandated marketplace for compostable alternatives. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. This is something that uh, the Big Island can take the lead on, or almost the lead, and I hope you'll move forward with it. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much for the time.